The girl's feet were bound dead center to the dais, and her hands were tied behind her back in the torture device. As Adam turned the dial, the girl's arms were instantly yanked high into the air. But Adam didn't think it was enough, and brought in a thicker lever, followed by another hard squeeze. Hearing the girl's screams, Adam became even more excited. Just like this, the girl's whole body's bones were pulled and all the joints were dislocated. Then, Adam tied the rope to the girl's joints, then stepped on the pedal. A real-life version of the puppet was born. Under Adam's constant manipulation, the puppet dances to the music and even gives Adam a kiss in the ear. When Adam stops manipulating the puppet, it collapses to the floor as if it were lifeless. It's brutal to watch, but the girl is lucky. Other people who were not chosen to be puppets were brutally murdered by Adam and dumped in boxes on the street. Such crazy behavior soon attracted the attention of the police. They found a wooden box in the city center containing a our male body. The body had been folded in half and placed in the box, and there were obvious strangulation marks at the neck. A head of blonde hair was dyed black to make matters worse. A couple three kilometers away from the crime scene had also gone missing. The boy's body was found with his brown hair also dyed black, and his death was extremely similar to the previous victim. While the girl's whereabouts are still unknown, investigations reveal that the girl was only a baker and had very simple relationships. Combining the suspicions of the two murders, the police came to the conclusion that the murderer has a strict appearance requirements for men. Once they do not meet the brutal murderer, and the girl just feed the needs, so they were left behind. The murderer will surely commit the crime again next, picking a suitable male substitute. While the police had just come to a conclusion, Adam had set his sights on another dark-haired man, pretending to be attacked. He knocked on the man's door looking for help. The eager man opened the door unsuspectingly, not realizing that the other man had quietly taken out a prepared tranquilizer needle and committed another crime. And with that he was smoothly brought back home, made into a mannequin of the living has been complete. He was excited to give the girl put on the headdress, despite the other side of the bitter plea, directly pull out scissors to force cut the trouser tube and then tied the two people to a piece, took the tools to make a mannequin, ready to give the target to play a hole. He was seen aiming the nails at his wrists and dropping them down hard. Adam roared in anger, having intended to nail down the hole to manipulate the mannequin, but it hit the aorta and the mannequin just died. His plan went out the window, seeing his panicked appearance. Shorty hated him and snarled, instead of taking command like an adult, you're sitting in here crying like a baby. Thinking of his dead father, Adam immediately perked up. There was not much time left for him. On the other side, the police rushed to the scene after receiving a report of a kidnapping and realized that this time the kidnapped person was born with dark hair and might be the real target the killer was looking for. The forensic pathologist who conducted the autopsy also found suspicions that the deceased had been hanged multiple times during his lifetime. Yet there were no obvious strangulation marks at the next talk, indicating that he was tied up with specialized materials. The V-shaped wound from the heavy fall after being hung up was the real cause of his death. The knee joint was also completely dislocated, having been ripped off so hard in life that it was hard to imagine what the killer was really up to. The officers deduced from the injuries on the body that the murderer was a brutal sadist and should have possessed specialized tools for the crime. The police officers immediately checked all the stores in the neighborhood that sell torture tools, but found nothing. While the police were worried, the third victim appeared. It was the tied-up black-haired man. His body was also folded in half. Strangely, there were no strangulation marks on his neck, and the cause of death was blood loss from his wrists. The careful long-haired officers noticed that the jeans he was wearing matched those of victim too. So they followed the logo on the pants and managed to find the tailor store. When they asked the owner who the buyer of the clothes was, the other party excused themselves to check it out and ended up just driving away. The officers felt something was wrong and immediately put out a city-wide manhunt for the vehicle. But instead of fleeing and going home, the owner found Adam and wanted to ask his old friend what was going on. After all, there were only eight sets of clothes in total, all of which had been bought by the other man. Seeing this, Adam took the initiative and invited the other men in for tea. The boss went along with it, but just as he entered, Adam locked the door behind him. This is now into the wolf's den. A ready-made male puppet arrives at the door. Adam began to make the puppet face. He covered the paper on the other side of the face. Taste paste to seal, followed by the string tied to the various joints. Change the prepared costume. A real-life version of the puppet is ready. At this time, the police also got the latest news. The autopsy of the third victim showed that not only the arm had strangulation marks, but also dislocated the jaw. Hearing this news, the long-haired police officers on the side was puzzled. The joints were all dislocated, the palms were perforated, and the person was also hung up and suspended. The murderer was a trying to make the victim into a puppet on strings. His words enlightened the crowd, but before they could rejoice for long, another father and son disappeared. Thankfully, a witness sees the killer's blue van in the parking lot, where the father and son were abducted. The superintendent suspects that the killer's motive may be linked 
to the father-son relationship. Sure enough, the policewoman finds out from the files that a famous puppeteer died in an opera house robbery 50 years ago, and his son Adam just happened to witness it all. Adam happened to be a regular customer of the costume store. Immediately afterward, the policewoman figures out that this puppeteer's best pair of creations, the man with black hair and the woman with red hair, there was no doubt that Adam was reenacting the opera house robbery from back in the day. So he must be there at this very moment. The crowd rushes to the opera house and, sure enough, Adam puts the kidnapped father and son on stage and begins rehearsing confidently. As the machine spins, a performance of string puppets is about to begin, but the man puppet on stage refuses to cooperate, only to be seen struggling in a last-ditch attempt to make a last stand, and the next moment he's thrown heavily to the floor. Adam warns him that if he doesn't behave, everyone will die, and with that, he picks up a firearm and shoots it directly into the thigh of his father, who is standing by as a warning. There can be no room for error in this carefully planned show. The stage will be packed by then, and it is imperative that they approve. The long-awaited show finally kicked off. Father and son were tightly tied to the chair. The leg wound is still bleeding. The two real puppets with the appearance, but the audience was unusually calm, and even applauded. The father and son on the stage were scared to perform the robbery situation, but behind the Adam is like a magic like a line repeating the line. It turned out that he and his father encountered robbers. A small Adam pleaded with the puppet to help himself, but waited for a crisp gunshot. His father was brutally killed in this way. This has always been a shadow in Adam's mind and he worked diligently for many years until the car accident struck a year ago. A brain injury caused his memory to linger on the day his father was killed, and the heartbroken man decided to save his father with a puppet, seeing that the play is about to reach its climax. Adam rushes to pull the puppet out from behind the curtain, but the police suddenly arrive on the scene and terminate the performance. Adam yells at the security guards and gets very emotional, saying that the puppets hadn't saved his father yet and that he can't stop the show. It turns out that in Adam's eyes, the puppet has always been a real person with flesh and blood, and because his father loved him so much, he couldn't bear to break his son's fantasy. So he didn't tell him that the puppet wasn't a real person. In the face of emotional outbursts, Adam, the police officers patiently persuade him. If the robbers do to impose on these people, then what is the difference between you and the robbers? Originally only wanted to try. I did not expect that these words touched Adam. He slowly lowered his gun, and the officers took control of him in the process. At that moment, there was a round of applause from the stage. Adam confidently felt that this is the audience's recognition of their own. But in the eyes of the police, there is no real person on our puppets. It turns out that all of this is Adam's own fantasy. All of Adam's bizarre behavior seems to come from the brain damage after the car accident. But the root cause is from the trauma left behind by his childhood. His father's death has always been an unresolved issue in his mind, and the death of the puppets has also become his obsession. The car accident was just the final straw that broke the back of his sanity, 